Hello everyone, I'm Extra Cheesy 87 and this is Let's Play Apollo Justice Part 20. In the previous video, we got into the second trial of the chapter and we have finally established that the killing took place in the second set, not the third set. The thing I've been yelling about for like, I don't know, most of the case at this point. Now hopefully we'll be able to finish the case in this video because I only have an hour to record. So it would kind of suck if we get to like the very end and then we have to end the video and we're not quite there, which I feel like might happen because usually I feel like the second trials are like two and a half hours, but maybe if we don't get too bogged down like we're doing right now, we'll be able to finish. I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but sadly it has. Let me tell you why your little fairy tale makes no sense at all. It sounds good. I'll give you that. You can a reason why the killer bothered to follow the lyrics of my song. But I question your logic. For it's flawed from the very beginning. Flawed? Yes, yeah, a contradiction in her forehead. One I've pointed out several times, no less. At the time of the crime, the small window at the scene was closed. I could lame have heard a voice through it. I know that you would like to divert our attention from that critical fact. But you're basing your entire line of reasoning on a false premise. Right. Emmer's testimony is my entire case. The voice you heard, the shooter's voice. What if you couldn't hear it, Apollo? Look, what do we have? Look, look, what do we have? A man saying press the switch? And near the crime scene we have a switch. Which acts as a remote trigger for an igniter. And last but not least, Prosecutor Gavin's flaming guitar. It can't all be coincidence, but how do I make it work? I see a more direct line of questioning is required. When the crime scene was investigated immediately after the crime, that window was closed. You had to tell us how Lamer heard the voice? Well, I mean, what if the thing wasn't closed? A key point to be sure. Mr. Justice, can you explain this to the court? You've got one thing to prove and one thing only. Lamer heard a voice. And she heard it during the second set. How was Lamer able to hear the voice? Well, I mean, I feel like the most obvious is that the window just happened to be open then. Obviously the window was open. Had to be for her to hear the voice. Objection! News bullets in her forehead, that horse is dead. Stop beating it for all our sakes. That window was closed. This is a hard fact. Reported by the investigation team. But... Oh, you have evidence to the contrary, perhaps? I mean, not really, no. I mean, it's just that if it took place during the second set and we only confirmed it was closed during the third set, I mean, it's, it, you know, it's a possibility, which is really all we need. Well, well no, but then do be quiet. I tire of the charade. All right. And then it'd be that she's somewhere else, that she was above the, uh, the room during the transition. We investigated the scene, the window was closed. The shooter had no reason to close it, had it been open either. Meaning it was impossible to hear the voice through that window. It's good to hear that you're making sense again. For a moment I was afraid you might be bored again too. As I was saying, Lamaroy cannot hear the voice through that window. There can only be one explanation. She heard the voice from another location entirely. What's this? <laughs> you do amuse me so. And here I thought you and Good Sense were back on speaking terms. I'm afraid you and Good Sense speak two entirely different languages. Shall I interpret for you her forehead? Lamaroy clearly said she heard the voice through that small window. There was only one small window at that scene. Are you sure? Think about it. Isn't there another small window at the scene? There is? Ah, I know that look. He wants us to ask him. Very well. You claim Lamar heard the voice from another location. Mr. Justice, show us where the location was. Heard the voice from here. This is where Lamar heard that voice from. Well, that's no small window. That's the air vent. And she can't see. What did she tell us? She said she's a Borgian unfamiliar with our language. It's not a stretch to imagine this. Call, she called this air vent a small window? 
Now you've done it. You've gone beyond ridiculous and gone into ludicrous speed. So Lamiro is up to the ventilation system listening to this man's voice. It's the only logical explanation, yes? Logical. I think you that word means what you think it means, her forehead. Okay, but what about it isn't logical? <laughs> it hardly merits saying. Why would Lamiro be in the ventilation system? Hiding like a rat. No offense intended to her, of course. I quite like rats. The explanation for that is simple, Prosecutor Gavin. Isn't it, Lamiroar? You've been listening to our discussion here, yes? I yes. I admit, it's had me quite confused. Yes, the small window was closed. But why should that mean I could not hear through it? I feared our prosecutor might himself need an interpreter. <laughs> the problem here is words. Lamiroar, this small window through which you heard the voice. Was it up high on the ceiling of the roof? Not low on a wall? Yes, it was on the ceiling. I thought it was weird that you Americans have a window on your ceiling. Order, order. And I will have order. I said that one myself this time. Witness! You will clarify the statement of the court. Are you in fact saying that you were up above the ceiling of the room? And that's where you heard the moment of the crime? Yes, in fact I was. I'm sorry, I never imagined it would become such an important point. Yes, well why the heck were you up there? Think? I believe it's time for another testimony. I, I'm not sure, I, I can't... May I remind you this is a murder trial? We will hear your testimony. Tell us why you witnessed the crime from above the ceiling of that room. Or else your friend will die. And we'll probably throw your ass in prison too for lying to me 18,000 times. Looks like I'm on the right track. I do think the reasoning for why she's like, oh, I said I wasn't going to reveal his secret is like, yeah, but like someone's about to be murdered. Someone you care about. Like, it's so dumb. They're just absolutely idiotic. Now, I mean, I get like not saying it at first, but like holding out like this long is just stupid. Yes, I was about to see when I heard the voice. I had heard there was a small window there before. It was in the middle of my performance. I had no time to report what I had heard. As to why I was there, I cannot say. I am bound to secrecy on this matter. Shit's so dumb. Bound to secrecy? In my line of work, one has many obligations to uphold. But you say you were in the middle of your performance. This did happen during the second set. I did not witness the crime. You must understand. I only know what I heard. You must tell us what you're doing in detail. That's what the cross-examination is for, yeah, her forehead? My mission in this court is to discern the truth. No obligation, no binding pack may hinder that mission. Very well. Mr. Justice, you may begin the cross-examination. What are you going to do, Apollo? We're going to find out the truth. She's up above that ceiling for a reason. I just have to get it out of her. Okay. Above the ceiling. Could you be more specific? I cannot. Because you're bound to secrecy. Yes. To tell the truth, I was not supposed to even say I was above the ceiling. I dare not say more. So dumb. Doesn't sound like I'm supposed to be able to coax out of her by asking. My small window, you mean that air vent. I only remember that I needed to be careful over where I put my hands and feet. I cannot see the light coming through the window, of course. Air vent, great. You could trip you up, certainly. So I was walking very carefully when I heard the gunshot. Startled, I crouched and listened. That is when I heard his voice come through the room. Darren's voice. I knew something terrible had happened, yet... Without a word, you just let the third set start. After the curtain closed to the second set, there was still much to do. You could have prevented this whole misunderstanding if you only told us sooner. Yes, but I thought it was America. People get shot all the time. I said this, no? 
See little point in badgering the witness, what's done is done. Mine works differently when it's in the middle of performance. Yeah, but like, why is it that all of these cases revolve around every participant being dumb as a bag of rocks? <laughs> if, if, if a single person ever acted with a modicum of common sense, there would never be a single trial in this universe. I've lost my voice in the middle of a show and kept on singing completely unaware. Singing without a voice, only all contradictions are so obvious. If only I could get Lamar to talk. Pressure like this doesn't seem to be getting me anywhere. Can't say. You heard the gunshots in the second set during your performance. You're quite sure? Yes. Why would I lie about the time? Why you told us yesterday? No one asked me. I thought you all knew. I told you Maki was not the killer. I told you this many times. Yes, you did. You never told us why. I am sorry. I was not able to speak of it. Unable or unwilling? It's not talking, Apollo. What do we do? We'll have to prove it ourselves. As long as she is bound up by the pack of silence, she won't talk. I can prove why she was up there. She'll have to admit it. How are you going to do that? She was singing on the stage, Apollo. She couldn't have been up above the ceiling, too. Yes, she could. I've got a theory as to why, too. Maybe I've got the evidence to prove it. Okay, I don't know where to present it, though. Oh, that's a... I thought that was the end of, uh... The wraparound? It's gonna make some hard proof getting proof to make a talk. Okay. Alright, take me back to the last one. We'll press it. Exactly. Who bound you to secrecy? I'm not sure I'm about to say who it was. No, I think perhaps that is all right. It is just a name after all. It was Valent Grammary. Perhaps you know him. Valent Grammary? What? You mean Uncle Valant? What? Valent Grammary? Who, who the hell's that? A Grand Magus, the one responsible for the illusion performed during our concert. Interesting reaction, Prosecutor Gavin. Lenroy was bound to secrecy. Gonna take some hard-hitting proof to make a talk, okay? Um, heard there was a small window there before. All right, so I mean, presumably it's this. But like, I don't know where to present it. I had no time to report what I heard. I cannot say. I cannot say, I say. I, can, I cannot, I cannot say. I feel like it's not this part. To prove it ourselves. If we can prove why she was up there, she'll have to admit it. But yeah, but like... Where do I present it, though? Is it here? I feel like this isn't the best spot for it, but there is the most dialogue. In the middle of my performance, I had no time to report what I had heard. I feel like this one kind of makes the most sense. Do I, like, do the video I don't feel like it's the videotape. Because I feel like we'll need the videotape in a little bit, because we're going to make the connection to the breach. My heart says here, but my brain is like that. This line had so much dialogue for it that I feel like we have to go here. All right, we'll go with my head first, and then my heart. Okay, should have gone with my heart, or maybe it's neither of them. All right. But like I know what to do. I just uh, this is the most annoying part of these games when it's like you know what to do, but you don't like the game isn't. I mean, generally, I think this game has had, like, the best lead. Like, it's done the best job of leading you to understand what it wants. Like, when you, like, how to present stuff. I think it's been by far the best so far of the games in that regard. Like, just the raw gameplay and, like, leading. But this one's a little... Alright, 
so let's try it here. What do you think about the witness statement? Uh, I'm not sure I follow you. It clearly uh, contradicts the um, uh, what I thought. I don't sound very sure, Mr. Doctor. I'm Doctor Overworld. I mean, I can't think of any other evidence that more clearly. Because, I mean, there's videotape. But, I mean, I, I feel like... Okay, it does at least mention his name there. It's like, I don't know. Because, I mean, I feel like this makes more sense. Well, okay, actually, I kind of see the argument for the videotape now to, like reference the magic trick because I guess we haven't established there was a magic trick in the show yet in the court it's all right let's let's try and like establish the vanishing act because maybe it's that you establish the vanishing act with the videotape and then you use this to show how it was done okay blame your truth be told the reason for your presence above that scene is quite clear Especially when you consider what happened during your performance. What happened? I don't really have a problem with that one. After thinking it through a little bit more. I do think you can make a valid argument for presenting the diagram to showcase like, okay, this is where she was. Why would she have been there? But I, I guess we hadn't fully established the video performance yet. Or the, the vanishing act. It's all right here on this video. Yeah, look at the video again. We spent all our budget on this bad boy. <laughs> it's me. I'm Gavin. I have a sick tan when I'm on stage. They spray tan my ass up. Yeah. Sure do love this guitar. I know it doesn't look very fancy or expensive, but it really is. I would hate for it to catch on fire. Oh, God. They should have time to crawl through that thing in time. I don't fucking buy it. I don't buy it. And how the brooch fall down through the thing and get all the way over there? Thing made of rubber? I don't, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. As we can see, Lamar was clearly not on stage for her entire performance. So it saddens you to be so realistic? Amor was incapable of actually vanishing, let alone teleportation. The only explanation is that she was hidden from view, and during that time she moved to the back of the form. Apollo? What, Trucy? It's not nice to reveal Magician secrets, and it's against the rules. It's literally a fucking murder case, you imbeciles. I'm a lawyer, I'm not supposed to be nice. This is all very fascinating. How is it possible? There's only 20 seconds or two when she disappears and reappears. Is it that long? I feel like it's like 10 max. She could have moved that fast. I mean, maybe I could in my youth. I used to be pretty spry. Is something wrong, Prosecutor Gavin? This was his concert, his show. He knows that the illusion was, was performed. Ah! He just realized in his own oversight. Let's look at the cross section diagram again. Here we can trace a route through the ceiling. Goes from the stage to the backstage to the rear of the form. Ah! Call Amaro's testimony from yesterday. I was on my way from stage to backstage exit. There was like a little window. That's how I saw it. Went from the stage to the backstage exit. A perfect description of the ride above the ceiling. Amaro knew of this because of her part in the illusion. She wasn't the only one who knew. What? Just now in the lobby, Maki told me something. I know. I know if I open vent, I can leave stage and back. Backstage. He, he said that? Oh, were you not informed, Prosecutor Gavin? I, I know about the Vanishing Act, of course. But I had no idea the route that would be used. Wait, that magician, tell me. You should only reveal details of their acts on a need-to-know basis. You're the bread and butter of a magician's life, you know? That's why he found Lamar to secrecy, and was willing to let some person die over it, because he's an asshole. 
Well, let me roar. I am impressed, Mr. Attorney. Maki was right about you. What does this mean? Are you saying you was right above the ceiling? I did. What? That's but I'm still a little confused. Why is that, Your Honor? As I said before, I'm very hungry. <laughs> what? Uh, it was real time when she disappeared when she reappeared. Twenty seconds stops. How could she do it so fast? Unless she stopped to hear the shooter's voice. Uh, that's a good question. Can the witness explain this to the court? A, uh, crave fast. Very well, Mr. Justice. Yeah? It's up to you. Do your thing, or whatever. What thing, Your Honor? You can explain how Lamar was able to teleport like she did. Or I'm throwing your case out with a bathwater. Yes, I will have a small child sentenced to death over a very inconsequential detail. Why do I get picked on? It's Lamor who isn't going along with the program here. As I have stated before, I am not at liberty to speak of the illusion that night in detail. <laughs> so dumb. You also have to tell us what you can. We'll hear your testimony on this. Mr. Justice, it'll be your job to bring the truth out of her. If you would, please. Right. Like a student for finals. Good luck, Apollo. I feel like we're probably not going to finish this trial in this video. Because we still haven't even gotten Shark Boy in the stand yet. I followed the route exactly as I was instructed. There is an emergency exit in the backstage where a stagehand waited. From there, one can enter the form on the opposite side of the stage. The plan was for me to move there in two minutes. I was on my way when I heard the voice. Two minutes. Two minutes, you say? Mystery deepens. This was too much to hope the judge would come up with something. That's my curiosity. Take it away, Mr. Justice. Right, Your Honor. He's not here right now. He can't save you anymore. He's written out of the story. Nobody liked him. All I have to do is find the contradiction between what Lamry was saying. Or maybe they did like him. Maybe that's why you're getting written out of the next game. Possibly. <laughs> what we can see plainly in the video. I figured it out already. I am a magician, after all. Well, tell me. Not a chance. I would gladly let a little 14-year-old boy get executed because of, uh, reasons. You're supposed to be on my side here. Oh my god, it's it's actually, it's pissing me off more and more. Like, the more I think about the fact that they're like, yeah, I'm glad to let a small child get murdered. How did you, uh, proceed along this route? Hell, yeah, why I walked? You arrived behind the form much too fast to have been walking. Tell the truth. You rode some kind of vehicle. What? A vehicle? What kind of a vehicle? What a novel idea. I like it. Yeah, it's not a bad guess. Wrong, but not bad. Yeah, laugh at the dumb attorney. I don't mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the girl is right. That vent was much too small for vehicles. You was tight fit. Even I had to crouch as I walked. I cannot imagine a vehicle that would fit in such a small space. It wasn't a vehicle. What was it? Had a bit of a sneeze there. I've been going for a while there, Mr. Justice. Too bad. I don't know, let's imagine a little tiny minecart. Ready for the next part? I don't feel like I want some kind of quiz show. Did everyone on the content staff know about the trick? Not all. Only a few that were needed to help. See, like I said, it's on a need-to-know basis. So not many people knew about the trick. What were these stagehands required to do? One needed to open the emergency exit. The door to the stairs is locked, but one's through there. From there, one can enter the form on the opposite side from the stage. So when you came back out, you were behind the audience. Yes, that is how it worked. Not a bad show, but I do say so myself. That's Uncle Val for you, the old grammary touch. On the video, you were only gone for 20 seconds. How was that possible? That's the part I don't get either. <laughs> yes, it would be hard to go so far in only 20 seconds. Hmm. Plan was to move there in two minutes. Two minutes? 
Yes, it can be done in one minute if you are running. Running? In that cramped dark tunnel above the ceiling? <laughs> Mr. Attorney, have you forgotten? Dark or lit, it makes no difference to me. Uh, that's true, but... You were saying that on the night of the concert, you made the trip in two minutes? Yes, but I nearly didn't make it in time. You see, I stopped halfway. Amara disappears in the video for 20 seconds. She says she made the trip in two minutes. In my professional opinion, I bet the answer's right there in that video. Well, Mr. Gustus, perhaps you have some evidence for us. Something that can explain the discrepancy between the video and her testimony. Oh, uh, yeah, the approach. Evidence explaining the discrepancy. So, like, what would I present? Would I present the video or I'd present the brooch? Because it's basically what we're, I guess we're saying is that what we see at the end is not actually her. I do love how skipping is actually, it's pretty much the same speed as just watching it. It's like, we're basically, we're saying this is not her. Yeah, I don't know. Because I don't know if I present the video and then we point to the indiscrepancy or if we present the brooch first. There's one piece of evidence that explains the discrepancy. So, like... Lamiroar, you happen to remember this brooch? The brooch! We saw it yesterday, did we not? It was found at the scene, Your Honor. You're bringing this up now, why? Thought we had already determined when that was dropped. So did I, but we hadn't. Take another look at that video. We spent a lot of money on this video. Your ass is gonna watch it many times. Here, you can see she's wearing the brooch. See, because I was thinking they were going to be like, oh, go into the video and then you have to pick the frame that has the, or the sequence that has the inconsistency. So that's why I was kind of thinking we wanted to present the video, but let's look a bit later. Okay, so you're either here, Mr. Justice. Ah, just wait a second. I still don't see anything. What? The brooch, it's gone. What? Yes. The brooch disappeared in the short space of 20 seconds. It takes a full minute to run from the stage to the backstage. Which means there can only be one explanation. The Lamoureux we see before the vanishing act and the Lamoureux we see after are two different people. What? What? The brooch was found on the floor of the crime scene. And not just on the floor. But on the floor directly beneath the air vent. Well, not really directly beneath. Once again, I think it had to be made of rubber. The bounce over like that? Lamroar, tell me. I mean, it's dropping on, even if it was made of rubber, it's dropping on carpet as well, so. Whatever, that, that's a minor nitpick. Did you drop the brooch in your way from the stage to the backstage? The very moment you witnessed the crime? Yes, I think I did. Porter! Bro Brosker Gavin! From your expression, I gather you had no idea this was the case, sir, Judge. I, of course, knew about it. What? Don't get me wrong, I wasn't hiding it. It just never occurred to me. That the switch and the shooting took place at the same time. That was right, there was a switch. There was. Just before the stage's tower rose, Lamoureux was replaced. Far on the subject, just who was this replacement, Lamoureux? Uh, a clone, Your Honor, made by a magic science machine. Why the man behind the illusion? Valid Grammary. Just Grammary? That's quite the illusion, but I don't get one thing. Yes? Switch happened before the tower rose, correct? So you weren't on the stage. That's right. But this, uh, fake Lamiroir is still singing. And she's pretty good. That's true. Oh no, are you gonna learn the secret to live music that they don't always actually sing? <laughs> Come on, Apollo, that's an easy one. They were just playing a recording. 
The Gavineer is on some kind of air guitar band for a line. Oh, you mean I'm wrong? We play a show live. We play live. No recordings. Well, yeah, but you're not part of the... I mean, you know, she wasn't part of that. Perhaps you can explain. Very well. Yes, do tell and add your testimony. And to keep singing even while I moved? You were singing? Yes. Mr. Gavin expressed a dislike for recordings. Do I use this? Wait, so you were singing the whole time? Even when you were crawling above the ceiling towards the backstage? Why should it matter where I sing? Even when everywhere I go is the same darkness. But if you were singing while you were walking. That's right, wouldn't the shooter and victim have heard? He was singing right over their heads after all. That is right, well the speaker. Are you sure? It's be pretty hard to hear in the missile than singing in the ceiling. Once again, we come back to the state of the scene of the crime. What state? I, I know what he means. The old speaker, Apollo. The speaker. The speaker was blaring at the time of the murder. Hey, it's me. I'm in a flashback. I get to be in this case a little bit more. What up? It's me, Emma. Remember me? I was in the first game, Kata. Uh, unless you played like the original release and you didn't get to see me, then you're probably a little confused. But like, whatever, man. Monitoring? I think it's in a real-time feed from the stage microphones. Use it for knowing when your set's coming up. Satisfied. That dressing room is fitted with a large speaker playing a direct feed from the stage. At my request, actually. Lamar was singing in the ceiling. Sounding just like Lamar was singing over the speaker? Genius, her voice was hidden by her voice. Lamar? I have just remembered something. My visa is up. I must go. Goodbye. <laughs> D do tell. When I heard the noise, the gunshots, yes. It startled me, so I... So you... I stopped singing. What? I forgot the words I was supposed to sing. The song stopped? Thankfully, it was the very beginning of the second verse. Same as the first. So not many would notice. Forehead. That mixing board I lent you. Where is it? Mixing, huh? That machine, Apollo, the one that breaks music and attracts. Look at this, I completely forgot about it. Now, this doesn't fly that we've literally had it in our back pocket the entire time. Because sometimes they're a little ambiguous over the way our evidence case works. Sometimes it's actually on our person, sometimes we just have a copy of it. Or like, you know, we just have like evidence that it exists. But this means that we actually have the mixing board like in our back pocket. Because, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, you know, we had the gun in court, but, like, when we go back to the scene of the crime, the gun's still there. So it's like we didn't actually have the gun on us. But the fact that, you know, we have them, he's, like, present the mixing board means that we've had this in our back pocket the entire mixing board, the entire time, canonically speaking. Let's take a listen. I'm listening. I'm listening. Once again, we spent a lot of money on this sequence. All right. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. The song does stop there. It does. I wasn't really paying attention. I got zoned out. I've seen it so many times. I can't force myself to care anymore. Look at the lyric sheet. Top of the second verse. See where it says pleasure, pleasure? And listen again. There's no actual words, Apollo. There's no words. There was, there was like a word count for this case. Like a, like a time to beat counter that had to be bet, had to be established. I don't know. This is evidence indeed. I believe we were guilty. Am I going to turn a mistake? Crime didn't happen during the third set. 
Happened during the second, during Lamor's ballad. That's true. No one on stage during the second set. It could have been the shooter. It means that Darren Cassend could have done it. Because he wasn't on stage for the second set. Well, Prosecutor Gavin, fascinating. Don't believe I've ever seen a trial turn around quite so thoroughly. Yet one problem remains. What's that, Prosecutor Gavin? Your forehead's theory does have a certain kind of logic to it. It's entirely based on Lamro's testimony. Is there a problem with that? Oh, you mean how she's lied to us eight billion times? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a... It's quite simple, though it pains me to say it. What if she's lying to protect the defendant? You have no proof. All I'm saying is the truth is as of yet unclear. Until we hear directly from the man himself. The man? Oh god, don't tell me they're coming to get me! Yes. Though well, he's a friend and band member, Dan Kassin must take the stand. You know other way. Someone with a new perspective on the case. As a suspect, to be frank. You think we can get his ass in approximately 20 minutes? Probably not. Finally, the rat's coming out of his hole. And I'm ready to catch him. Darren Grissin, get ready for justice. This is a good time. I think pause for a recess. Prosecution will summon the witness. I'm going to summon a burrito. Ha <laughs> ha. Have him here and ready for the time we begin. And the last man needs to remind him what his duties are. Very well. Court is adjourned for 15 minute recess. I might summon two burritos. Alrighty, part two. Trial two, part two. 1.40 p.m. You're gonna make us work a full day. Paul, oh, I can't believe it. it really happened during the second act? And right in the middle of Lamar's performance. Why was she in that air vent? And why did she not think to ever at some point even try and mention that she heard gunshots? I mean, you know, could have just talked to one of the people on her staff. Even if, I mean, you could, even if you were like, oh, I didn't want to reveal, like, you know, there's nobody who spoke Borgonese and I didn't want to reveal that I speak English. You could just say the word gunshot and still maintain the idea that you don't know English or act panicked in any way. If anyone acts in any sort of logical capacity, this murder would never even begin to have a chance of going unnoticed. How was she in that air event? And that switch on the flaming guitar. You link it all together, that's what you end up with. I knew you had what it took. Hey, it's me. Daddy! Mr. Wright! You believed in me? Huh? Oh no, I was talking to my buddy, the police officer guy. Who are you? Not really. I just thought that'd make a cooler entrance and say, Hiya. Why do I even bother hoping? Where have you been lately? You haven't been coming to the office at all. Sorry about that, Trucy. I'm on a secret mission. Secret? You mean like you're undercover? Yeah, I've got a final burrito for the judge. Like Mr. Latouche, only shorter and not as well dressed? Oh no, what if you're shot too? <laughs> Would I do a thing like that to you? Uh, yeah, actually, that sounds kind of like you. Anyway, I'm off for a while again. You're leaving? Yeah, I might show up in the final case or something. I don't know. One thing before I go. What? Good luck. Right. Or bad luck. I don't know. I'm not really invested in this case. Uh, for all I know, the little kid did it. I haven't paid attention to the facts. Is that all you came to say? I think you have things pretty much under control. Look at Maki Tobe off the hook, no doubt. Yeah, but you're after the detective, aren't you? Aaron Crescent. Won't be easy proving he did it. Especially not under the current court system. The current court system? What did Prosecutor Gavin say during the trial? The case is based on one fragile assumption. Namely, that our diva divine is telling the truth. What about all the proof? The brooch and the, and the switch? A piece of jewelry and a lyrical blunder? There are plenty of other ways to explain these things. The flaming guitar, too. 
All because you lacked definitive proof of their connection to the case. But the sultry song just is lying. The case melts like butter in a frying pan. Leaving behind the faintly sin sin of failure. That's uh, my signature line of cologne, by the way. So what do I do? Like I said, good luck. And be aware that it would be impossible to prove his guilt by conventional methods. Oh, that reminds me. I have something to give you from my detective friend. Detective Sky, Emma? Let's see. This bag of snacks he was meant for me. Ah, here it is. What are those, Daddy? They don't look very good snacking material. They are found at the scene. They're not forged evidence or nothing. Haha. <laughs> Now, so the fragments reveal traces of gunpowder. Gunpowder? Probably a firecracker or something similar like the ones kids are into these days. Those fragments were found under the sofa at the scene of the crime, actually. Under the sofa? The Apollo? That's where we found that little device thingy. Right, this. Probably some evidence that makes sense. But, like, does it? That's all for me, I suppose. See you after the verdict. Maybe. Right. Every man has an igniter inside him. Excuse me? Find Darren Kassin's igniter and send it off. Phoenix out. <laughs> he walked out the door, just like, just like a magician. Normally. Uh, what does he want us to do? No conventional methods? What does that mean? He means that the evidence is probably forged and then when we present it, despite not knowing that it's forged, we will be just like him and then can no longer judge him and then we will join together to defeat uh, the final boss in the last chapter. I mean, I could definitely see that being the twist is that the evidence we... But I mean, they kind of already did that. So I don't know if that would be that strong of a... That it's like Apollo betraying his convictions. But I guess if it ended up happening twice, maybe he would, you know, change his mind to see that viewpoint. I guess we just have to take his advice and hope it makes sense when the time comes. I guess. Almost at the finish line. Hang in there, Tracy. Yeah, I guess that's really substantially not that different than the card thing in the first chapter, so they might not be doing that. does seem a little convenient though but we don't really know what the i mean i kind of forgot about the second igniter that how that didn't really make any sense at the time like you know we don't know what it was for what does it actually say about the fragments hello thank you say so, you think this was some kind of firecracker yeah one of those noisemakers like you shoot off on new year's so I guess that could have been the sound used for the second gunshots, not a recording. That it just was supposed to sound like gunshots. Isn't that in China these firecrackers on New Year's to scare off evil? But it's kind of the same thing. Really, I had no idea. But do you know this? It takes more than 500 peanuts to make one 12 ounce jar of peanut butter. At least maybe this fact had something to do with the evidence. Oh, wh where's the where's the detective guy? In the witness lounge, ready to be called at any time. Very well, I'll call him. Might I add, I don't believe any of this. He, Cam was the first detective I ever worked with. We stopped working together when he moved to Criminal Affairs, Division 3. That's the best division, by the way. Put his guitar playing, it fires my imagination. That's nice, but it has nothing to do with the material matter at hand. Correct? Oh, I know. Her forehead. Very well. Call the final witness to the stand. Detective Darren Crescent. Um, now, uh, for the for the record, we have to cut out his entrance because he did play the theme from Jaws, and we will be sued if that enters into the court record. So, uh, just pretend that it went dun on, dun on. Uh, just, just imagine that happened as he walked in. Name and occupation, please. Darren Kassind, Shark. That's the International Affairs Division, for those who didn't know. And I'm a guitarist with the Gavineers. Maybe you've heard of us? 
Do you fully understand the circumstances under which you stand before us today? As a shark, I don't recognize this court's authority. I need to be tried in animal court with other animals. Yeah, I understand, Your Honor. What I don't understand is how you let this happen, partner. In your word, I wouldn't be standing here. The situation's changed, Darren. You don't call me partner. <sighs> so much for old friends. See what you're doing, Darren. You're pressing the prosecution. Your Honor, if we could begin the trial. All right, Tom, we did. Let's hear your testimony. We're going to begin with your response to Lamar's testimony. If, in fact, you have anything to say about it. Oh, I got plenty to say. Lime must be a national pastime in Borgina. Wherever you're from, Mr. Justice. Ha <laughs> ha! Conventional methods are out the window, huh? Here goes nothing. Then he shoots up with a harpoon. <laughs> what do you think about that? Eva's lying, plain and simple. She's got nothing to back up her story. First place, she never heard my voice. She forgot the words because she heard gunshots? As if. Didn't Detective Emma Sky hear those gunshots in the third set anyway? Shooting took place when I was on stage, man. Huh. You claim her testimony was a lie. Now, I mean, if she hadn't lied 20 times before that, I could maybe believe... Oh, uh, Bailiff, you're, you're saying the record does state that she lied many, many times before this testimony? Oh yeah, I guess she's got a point. Don't get me wrong. I dig what she's doing trying to protect that kid. She got the court eating vague statements out of her hand just because she's blind. You go too far, Dan. Look, all I'm saying is, you got a reliable witness. Want to listen to the detective? Detective Sky? Hmm, I see. Mr. Justice, you may have begun the cross-examination. We didn't waste any time finding our weak spot. We can't do this with Lamero's testimony alone. I have to find some other way to prove when the shooting took place. Like some sort of firecracker. I'm pressing you. You're being pressed. You don't have any proof she was lying. You don't have any proof she wasn't not lying. Oh uh, yeah? You saying I lied? No, I'm just saying, uh... Apollo, glare back at him! I couldn't help it. I flinched my reflex. He's got eyes. Black little eyes. Like a doll's eyes. There's no humanity in them. Detective <laughs> Kassin? Yeah, what do you want? Uh, nothing. Apollo, chin up! Back straight, you're winning! You're wilting! That's hard as nails, he makes Waka look damn right cooperative! Look, there's no way the demon remembers my voice. Would have been a good bit if I could fully transition into the Jaws speech, but I don't remember it other than the start about black eyes, like a doll's eyes. You, you never talked to her even though you were playing in the same concert? Not a word, as far as I can recall. But weren't there planning sessions or something? But I mean... See, this this is not a good line of logic. Because she didn't recognize his voice until you heard her heard him again, right? It's not like he said she said, Oh, this voice I heard was Darren. It wasn't until she heard Darren talk in open court. That she's like, yeah, that's the voice I heard. So this isn't actually a contradiction. If anything, this kind of supports what she said. Having took care of all that himself. Darren wasn't involved in any of the meetings with her. As if you can just go around and remember everyone's voices like that anyway. Only an idiot would believe that. Humor's hearing is very sensitive. She could remember him if she heard him, I'm sure of it. I just can't prove it. And I need proof. Not the P word. We know she missed the word. The mixing board proved it. Oh yeah? It was a mistake. The limit on gunshots is a lame excuse. What do you mean? The mixing board proves what? Proves there was a mistake in the song, a miscue. So she just flubbed it up big time, that's all. He spins a story about a gunshot to pick the kid and cover for her own goof. Man, I had to hand it to her, she wasn't sticking it to me at the same time. Darren, watch what you say. Lamar was an artist. She just flubbed it up? That's no small accusation for a performer of her caliber. <laughs> she got to you alright, I can see it in your eyes. I tell you, most of her stuff is so pretentious, it's way over my head. I just keep my fin underwater, you know what I'm saying? I'm detecting a rift in the Gavineer's ranks. Anyway, she's too close to the defender. Her testimony can't be trusted. You ask me, I go to Detective Sky's story to drop a pick. I 
Actually, I was there too. So I right hear. Well, I would if I wasn't a shark. Sharks don't have ears. We sense the vibrations in the air. Or something. I don't know why sharks. Do sharks hear? Out maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Which means, because I mean, I guess sense the vibrations in the air. That's all hearing really is, if you think about it. But like we, we sense the vibrations through the water. It's different. It's not hearing. Shut up. I'm a shark, okay? Means you heard them too, right? The gunshots. Yeah. We heard gunshots. Neither I nor M actually saw the shooting, mind you. <laughs> Guess you and Lemmy all got the same excuse then. We know one thing for certain here. There were gunshot-like sounds that emanated from that room during the third set. What we must determine is whether those sounds were actually gunshots. Aki heard him too! Nobody said he ran for the air duct when he heard him? Now we figure out just what those gunshots during the third set were. Okay, so we'll probably present the firecrackers there, but let's press this last one for content. That could have been what the shooter wanted us to think. I'll tell you what the shooter, that kid, wants you to think. He wants you to think the diva heard me in that room. I have to rely on Lamar's testimony. As much as I'm enjoying the Darien and Forehead show, there's no need for such tempers. Don't make us into some comedy duo. It means the Gavin and Darien show is canceled. Neither of your claims can be proven or disproved. We could argue for days like this and get nowhere. Prosecutor Gavin's quite right. But we'll hear no further discussion on this topic without new facts. New facts, huh? Pretty eager to paint Lamar as a liar, isn't he? Their testimony is basically our entire case. This is tough, so what do we do? Got a few ideas. Just need to find another way to prove it didn't happen when he said it did. Alright, so what's the... Okay, was this one? I am clicking, I am clicking. You see it lighting up because I am clicking? Some things were found at the crime scene after yesterday's trial. What things? The first was this small device. That's the remote trigger igniter. Correct. And one more thing. What are those? The remains of something burnt? Not another guitar, I hope. This is a gunpowder were found in these fragments. We have a report that it was something like a firecracker. How did Gavin know about this? What, you think Detective Sky works for you? I received the report this morning, before coming here. Okay, well, it seems legitimate evidence, then. I said I made my decision, actually. What decision is this, Prosecutor Gavin? I registered Darren as a witness in today's trial. Just in case. This raises another possibility. Those gunshot-like sounds during the third set could have been two firecrackers rigged to go off by remote control. <laughs> you got an active imagination, don't you? But you shouldn't say every little thing you think. The explanation there seems a bit too convenient to me. How so? Are you saying these firecrackers just happened to go off? Right when two witnesses came walking by? Ha! That's right. Darren was out on stage when it happened. The, the headset. The headset. I wouldn't even know someone was backstage right then. I'll fucking, I'm gonna blast your ass. A firecracker goes off in a forest. There's no one there to hear. You get my drift? Why well, go through the trouble, man? That's like a shark with no chum. How do I explain this? I mean, I look at it, but Darren's a gifted detective. No any weakness, and he's sure to find it. But he's not. It's not weakness. I already know the answer. You may not look at partner. Gee, thanks, man. That reminds me. I happened to pass through that very hallway several times that day myself. And also something odd there just for the third set. Something odd? Bro, that was supposed to be my moment. I was supposed to get to present it, and then Trucy was going to hit the play button on track three, and then we were going to blast his ass. That's right. He picked this up in front of the door to the dressing room. What if the headset wasn't dropped, but placed? What if it was turned on? You could hear what was going on in that hallway. Even if you were out on stage. All right, they saved me the effort, I guess. Damn. Who side are you on, Gavin? Justice. Listen to me, Darren. There are no sides in a court of law. Which is why I now turn to you, her forehead. I have a question for you. Huh? For me? The igniter and the burnt fragments are found at the scene of the crime. It's only a possibility they were part of a ruse to fake the sound of gunshots. Throw the heads up from the hallway into the mix and you can fabricate an alibi. 
we're still not closer to proving anything. Now you may be wondering, uh, would the sound from the headset be loud enough to make you think there were gunshots literally right next to you? Probably not, but you know, whatever, we'll roll with it. We're still not closer to proving anything. Those gunshots might have been real or fake. We can't say. Ugh. You've raised the possibility that the shots heard during the third set were faked. Then you need to prove the other half of the case. The other half. Look, I'll just tell him. He wants you to prove the things went down in the second act. While a little piano player was on stage. Is that right, Gavin? Indeed. If you can't prove that, then to continue this cross examination will be pointless. Well, Mr. Justice, can you prove the crime took place during the second set? Yeah, faux show. Sure. You better know, Apollo, otherwise we're through. I don't know, man. <laughs> this is the confidence save? This is, I only ever do that when I 100% know the answer already. It, it can be proven. You make it sound like someone else is gonna come along and do it for you. I'll well, continue the call examination then, shall we? Witness, your testimony, if you would. This is gonna be easy. Needs an decisive proof and fast. <laughs> you ready, kid? Cause I am. Shooting took place during the second set. You're so sure? Let's see your proof. Yeah, alright, what if I pressed you first? The gunshots heard in the third set could have been What, some kind of setup? Heard that one before. You need proof, Apollo. You need to prove the shooting took place during the second set. Alright, maybe the gunshots are the key after all. What do you mean? Lamarore said she heard them, right? Right in the middle of her illusion, she was up above the ceiling. And she forgot the words of the song, yeah? You can prove the gun was shot right when she missed those lyrics. For home free, I think. True, not easy, but true. There's some way to prove that. Okay. Hey, <laughs> aren't you supposed to be cross-examining me? Try to refrain from private discussions during the cross-examination, Mr. Gustus. Unless you let me in. If you let me in, then it's okay. So let me take a quick look at the court record. He's pretty eager to paint Lamar as a liar, isn't he? Yeah, because her testimony is basically our entire case. Okay. So we're going to present it here. Our proof. That it took place during the second set. Our proof is that, um... The autopsy report the thing I've been talking about since the very beginning of the case. If he was shot right then, he wouldn't have died so quickly. I'm, I'm saying that... I'm just thinking, I'm pretty sure that's it. I can't think of anything else that makes more sense than that. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. This evidence clearly reveals a con contradiction. There, are you out of your mind? Why is this not the... Why will we bring this up? How's that man supposed to bleed out? Instantly. You don't know how blood works? I mean, this doesn't... Okay, this is... It's showing this one again now. It's not the other, uh, track. And, like, we're supposed to, like, hear a gunshot? Like, does track two ever do anything? Anybody hear any gunshots? Any, any bang? Like, which track has the vocals? But there's no vocals, so it's hard to tell. Like, there's not actually any vocals? Because that's the one we would want to narrow in on, is whichever one is, uh... Her feed? Like, is that supposed to be the, the vocals? That'd be the bass. That's the piano. That would be, I guess, the drums? That would be on this track I 
And I don't really hear any noise that sounds like a gunshot. I feel like it should be the autopsy report. Any second now. Oh, okay, you can hear it. Seems there was clear proof left behind. I still think it should be the autopsy report. Right here in Lamiroy's song. Song? What exactly is this um, device thingy? You got that in your pocket this whole time, Mr. Justice? A new variety of gramophone, perhaps? Come, come on, we just use this, don't we start on gramophone? Device is used to record a performance part by part. Part? Move the sliders to adjust the volume. Each instrument is adjustable separately, Lamiroy's voice included. Oh, what does this prove? According to Lamaro's testimony, the moment of the shooting, she forgot the words of the song. You intend to examine the recording at that moment, yeah? You might even hear those gunshots. Exactly. Ridiculous. How are you supposed to hear gunshots back in that dressing room out on stage? Have you forgotten, Dan? You're all wearing these headsets. Oh. We're all deeply involved in our performance. Lamaro's headset would have picked up what she heard all the same. Well, it's good to analyze in that recording. Right now. Stop singing when you heard the shots fired. Find that spot and I'll find the gunshots. Alright, but like... I don't know like what to do. Because, I mean, we know it's on track one, but, like, I guess I have to pause it at the time and then click track one. Because it, it was, like, right before the transition, right? Or was it right at this? I can't remember. I feel like it was, like, right here. If that doesn't... That restarts it. So, I mean, I, do I just click track one? I guess I just click track one. Because I don't know if it's really saving the spot. Your Honor, listen closely to this part. This is the track with Lamar's vocals. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. I'm losing my mind a little bit seeing this over and over again. Where's the second shot? I oh dear, something failure there, yeah. Sound like a gunshot. I still feel like the autopsy's better proof. Because, I mean, that's like scientific fact. You could argue that that was just like a noise. You can't argue against the fact that, like, his ass wouldn't have died instantly from that blood loss. So that means he would have been shot earlier than when we found him. What? We still got a mistake. I'm going to be kind of annoyed if that doesn't come into play at all. I believe the case has been made. Gunshots were heard during the second set, which means Lamaro's testimony is true. <laughs> Order! She was telling the truth what she heard. Surprising, considering all the lies beforehand, you know? Well, what do you say? Oh man, I'm in a flashback now. Me, the judge! I don't get to be in these that often. Uh, I'd like to thank... Uh, the court system, the academy, uh, my lovely wife, if she was still alive, she did not have eternal justice powers, so she died about 2,900 years ago. It's over. Press the switch now. Just that there was a gunshot and the guitar caught on fire. Dr. Crescent, you weren't on stage in the second set. You could have done it. Huh. Well, why don't we only hear one gunshot on the recording? You already know what I'm about to say. We'll find that out next time when we finish the trial, probably. So yeah, I'm Extra Cheesy 87. Stay tuned for the next part. And bye, guys.